corporate worship. Amen.
thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that as we lift you up, your word declares, and you shall draw all men unto you in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you that there is a drawing in the room, in Jesus' name, that as we exalt the name of our God, that as we make his name glorious, that as we make his name mighty, that as we make his name big, that as we make his name, oh God, in the name of Jesus, become established in the earth. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name, that you shall come in like a whirlwind, in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that there are sweeping come in the room this morning, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, let there be a shaking, let there be a shifting, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that Lord God, you shall come in the fullness of your glory, you shall come in the fullness of your strength, you shall come in the fullness, in the name of Jesus, of your might and power, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. Let God arise and every enemy be scattered in the name of Jesus. Every enemy, every enemy, every enemy be scattered in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you this morning in Jesus' name. And as the saints cry out, your word declares that as the righteous cry, he will deliver. Oh, Father, come on, saints. Oh, Lord God, we thank you. And as the righteous cry, that as we stand in our full authority, that as we stand in our full power, that as we stand in our sonship, in the name of Jesus, we think that God is even in this room, in Jesus' name, we prophesy, may the suns arise, let the suns arise, let the suns arise, in the name of Jesus, Father, we think that there will be a rising of the suns, and even as your word declares, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and, and oh God, and the earth is groaning, expectation of the sons of God in the name of Jesus father we thank you Lord God that we come into the fullness of our identity that we come into the fullness of our purpose and we come into the fullness of who we are in the name of Jesus father we pray this morning oh God made the blood made the blood let the blood let the blood serve as a reminder in the name of Jesus that my identity has been paid for in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, and we come into alignment in the name of Jesus. Our mind come into alignment, our spirits come into alignment in the name of Jesus. Our hearts come into alignment in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that we are those that will cause a riot. Oh, we are those in the name of Jesus that are called not only to be fire starters, but riot starters. In the name of Jesus, Father, we prophesy. In the name of Jesus, let there come a disruption, even in the service. Let there be a disruption, even in the service. Let there be a divine disruption. In the name of Jesus, break us out of formality. Break us out of time restrictions. Break us out of limitation. Break us out of religious formats. In the name of Jesus, oh, Father, we want you. And nothing else would do. In the name of Jesus, Father, we break out. We break out of the law. We break out of restrictions. We break out of limitation. We don't wait for a prophet. We don't wait for an apostle. But Father, we thank you that we walk in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we walk in the fullness of you. We walk in the power of you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, and as we move. We think that we'll be a people that move in demonstration. We move in power. We move in demonstration. We move in power. We move in demonstration. We move in power. In the name of Jesus, cleanse our lips, cleanse our hearts. In the name of Jesus, even in this midst, oh God, in Jesus' name, make your name known. Make your name known. Make your name known. Make your name known. And even as we praise, and even as we continue to worship, Father, we thank you that every idol and every construct of Baal and every day God will be broken in the name of Jesus. It will be eradicated in Jesus' name. We prophesy. We prophesy. We prophesy. Let the winds come. Let the winds blow. Let the winds go. Let the winds come. Let the winds uproot every demonic construct that comes to stagnate your people. I declare, let a fresh baptism come. Let a new way of glory come. Let a new fire come. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
your offerings on the altar and we build an altar to your name to only you god we want to see you so we build an altar to your name we build an altar to the name of jesus
believe God is doing something in us that we will not believe, although we've been told. Listen, I want to say hello to our online uh, viewers. God bless you. God bless you. Thank God for Apostle Stephen and Yolanda Garner, Prophet Yolanda Garner. They are doing kingdom work this morning. In the 8.30 service, we started a riot, so I didn't get a chance to be formal. But I'm going to try to use my notes if God per permits. I just want to break a mold. I'm going to ask Prophet Melody to help me. I want to break a mold of waiting for something to happen. Change the sound, minstrel. And this is a prophetic act. If we could just take a step out of waiting. As a prophetic act. I'm telling y'all, miracles happen when when prophetic people by the inspiration ask you to do something, you should do it. Yeah. Out of inspiration. Take a step out of waiting. Physically, take a step. Change positions. I'm telling you, I feel something shaking in the spirit that's moving. Our time of waiting is over. We don't have to wait for Pentecost. Pentecost happened. We don't have to be in a room waiting for a mighty Russian wind to come with one accord and, and, and mighty Russian winds to come and flow and fall. God is changing the narrative of that. The wind has blown. I'm telling you, God is commanding us to be moved out of a position of waiting on heaven to drop. He said, the, he told the disciples that thy kingdom come. This is the blueprint. Declare thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. And he came from heaven to earth fully man. To show us a demonstration of what needs to be done. We are in a season where we must manifest the works of him who has sent us. And we are not to sit on the sidelines constantly. I, I, this might sound a little controversial, controversial, but just lifting our hands, service after service, discern your moment. And doing the norm of what it takes to get through a service is not going to work. God is commanding us to arise. He's telling us, you, we give the devil so much credit for stuff he ain't even doing. He don't even care. He just said, I don't even have to fight them. They won't rise in their identity and believe who they are. Therefore, they'll never have it. So as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. And if you're going to manifest what God says about you, you're going to have to rise in that identity. We just need to lose a triumphant sound because we left on starting a riot. We done came back to a place. Uh -uh, we ain't going back. We starting a riot. We're starting a riot. Just for a few minutes. Keep it going, Judah. 
we're going to take a moment. We're going to pray out of our sonship. We're going to decrease some things. And it's going to be established. I believe that as we pray today, stuff that we've been wrestling with, things that we've been wrestling with, stuff that would not move, it's going to move today. When you get back to where you're going, something is going to be shaken. The doorpost moves at the voice of them that cries holy. And I'm not crying holy because it's a protocol in the church. I know he's holy. I know he's holy. We ain't going back. I promise you, when we don't know what to do sometimes, we lean to familiarity. But God is breaking that thing where we are not afraid to not know. I don't care if I don't know. I tell you one thing. Where he leads me, I will follow. Come on, lift your hands. God is breaking off you every rope, every tie, everything that has constrained you. I feel a healing coming from wounds that came from past churches, from leaders. There's a healing coming. You're being unraveled from those words spoken over you by leaders who, who, who you wouldn't let control in a season. And you, you begin to unravel yourself out of that control. But things were pronounced over you uh, that still have you bound today. Uh, they said you'll never make it uh, because you're out of protocol. They said if you don't honor me, God will honor you. Uh, and it was not God. It was not his voice. Uh, I break the voice of a stranger that is sitting on you uh, that will keep you from manifesting the nature of the true and living God. Uh, Today it breaks. Y'all gonna get mad at me, but we ain't singing. Break through, break through no more. The break God has gone before you. He's opened the way. There ought to be celebrations. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He understood the assignment. I'm telling you, uh, awake, awake those who are sleeping, and Christ shall give you light. You have authority. You're not going to come together and be praying, Lord, please. Lord, please help us. Please show us. Please. He has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. I break the constraints and fear, man, that's hindering the advancement of the kingdom. God wants to do something radical. And you'll say, I can't sing that song. Because they won't understand where it's coming from. And God is trying to liberate a people. But we are so stuck in our confinements that we will not let him be God. And we complain one to another. And we say it has to be more. We want more. We want to see more. I'm tired of the same thing. And God is saying arise in your sonship and produce my essence, my very presence in the earth. If you want to see change, you have to be it. And I'm afraid that we have tried to push a corporate narrative that will never work. Until we individually find our identity in him. To tell the people you are more than conquerors who do not believe it. 
will never call them to act how God has said act. We are partnered with the world in ways we don't understand. Listen, I won't even go on here. God began to deal with me about the word backsliding. Every time you hear backslide, you think somebody start fornicating again or they're in an adulterous relationship again or they getting high with pookie them again and they joined uh, 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 back with the gangs and hanging with the girls and they doing all this kind of stuff. Uh, the, the, the surest way to know you backslide is when those habits, those things that have became habitual to you as a believer, that zealous praise, that thing you couldn't contain like the Samaritan woman had to go tell somebody about because of the encounter. When that died, that's a sign that you are in a place of backsliding. It's so simple. It's when you move from the things that prompt your faith uh, to action uh, and you are filled with unbelief uh, to the point uh, that you don't even believe who you say you are. We want everybody to know who we are and we don't know. But I tell you one thing. I believe this with everything in my heart. If you rise in your sonship, you will have to put up a boulder and a blockade to keep people from getting to you. You don't have to kick a door down to be known or seen. You will become an access point where people will come looking for you. This ain't the kingdom, y'all. That we, we, what the stuff that we've been doing ain't kingdom. It's church. That's why we fight over positions and who gonna do what and how they gonna do it. That's why we control everything. You can't get the song of the bride out because I gave you a strip on what you're supposed to sing. I, I, you can't say what the Lord is saying even though you're a prophet and you flow by inspiration because I told you what you must say. I, 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 those, that's not the kingdom. God is breaking to pieces every other kingdom. I'm sorry, y'all can sit down. talking about sonship for those that wasn't in the first service it was a hot mess yeah. we follow very little protocols we gonna have to deal with that later but we But God is trying to get us to come to a new place in him. And this wasn't even in my notes, but I'm just talking about sons arising. And I want to deal with one of the things that hinder us from coming to our full place and measure. And it has everything to do with culture. And how we say that we're kingdom people, that I'm not of this world, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world, and all these things. But somehow, the culture manifests in our nature more than the culture of the kingdom. In Isaiah 6, I wasn't even going here, but this came to mind. Do you know before the Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, if you need somebody to go send me? Before he said that he was sent. That's why he was there. You know what happened? He got in the culture. And he adapted. He was supposed to bring the nature of God to a region. But when he got there, the culture was so strong that he adapted. 
He said, I'm in the midst of a people with unclean lips. And I myself have become unclean. And he went through a supernatural purging. But he said, King Uzzah died. Something structure was in the way. That had to die before he could see God. I promise you. I know we apostolic people and we don't, because we don't say hallelujah, thank you Jesus 15 times. And every time somebody's talking to us, we ain't blinking saying amen and oh, basha or none of that. We think we're not religious. But we have manifested the nature of religiosity in ways that I'll take a hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, over some of the stuff that we see manifest, the legalism, the control, how a gift cannot operate without becoming competitive one to another. Elijah didn't have to compete with Elisha. They didn't have to. Jeremiah didn't have to compete with Moses. He needed everything that was innate in every person. It's some things that if Moses hadn't shown up in. Life as we know it wouldn't be. If Elijah, Elisha didn't do what they did. If Elijah wasn't bold enough. Courageous, I'd rather say courageous than bold because some things we got to do in the face of fear, even though we are afraid, but because God said it. I may not trust Aqua, but I trust him. So I can do it even when I don't understand it because he never fails. It took courage for the Mount Carmel showdown. But he knew his God would answer. He let them build their altars, their sacrifice. What are we afraid of? You serve the true and the living God. God will not let us. In 2022, some things must be new. It has to be. We have prayed too long and too hard. God is ready. But what did he say? I'm looking for a people that I can show myself strong in. You know how God answers prayers? He shakes a man. And he says, you are in that realm. Bring that to them there. Somebody going to hear that. We pray to God and he shakes the man. Aqua, get up. Take that to them. If this earth is going to change this world as we know it, you got to answer to God shaking. The gifts in you, you got to take it to somebody. I free you from every enslaved mentality. You don't need permission to be like him. So I pray uh, for, I believe, these two things that are going to happen as we arise in our sonship. Is persuasion and identity. We have to be persuaded of who Christ is. It says the work of God is to believe. And then that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And it's to gain influence over by argument, advice, and treating. Or expostulization. I love that word. It's like to expose. To expose us to a fact. That Christ didn't 
once lives. He still lives. The days of us reason, reading biblical stories and getting excited. I mean, we're getting excited. Man, Moses part of the Red Sea. Am I taking away from Moses? No, we needed that to happen. But it can't be a good preach context. At some point, you got to let your rod down. Your rod down and It's there to let us know that it is possible to move in signs and wonders. I almost can't take hearing songs about, Lord, let there be signs, let there be wonders. Or songs about, today we break through. I, I almost can't take it no more. Because signs, wonders, and miracles... Follow them that believe. What are we trying to activate? We are not conjurers. We don't have to call a spirit up for a miracle to happen. Manifest the works of him who sent you. By all means, heal the withered hand. By all means, go to the room of somebody sick and unto the deaf and tell all unbelievers to go. And say, rise in the name of Jesus and watch them come back to life. By all means, Be fruitful and multiply. Our sons and our daughters, the next generation, will not make it in a system made by the hands of man. A few weeks ago, My husband had a big celebration at Spirit of God. And two of my children who hadn't been to church in quite some time, they came to be a part of the celebration. And I watched them. If you're a parent, you watch your children. And the power of God began to move through the purest worship. It was a heavenly sound. And the man of God got up to speak so plain with his jeans and his button-up shirt and just didn't look protocolish at all. And he was walking around high-fiving people and doing all kinds of stuff. If you didn't know he was the pastor, you wouldn't have known. It was like, oh, he's a pastor, Okay. And uh, he began to speak a simple message. So simple. And they heard it. Deacon Nancy, they heard it. They heard God. And I saw it. The light come on. But it was something about the atmosphere that was pregnant with the love of God, a representation of who he is. Wasn't nobody wearing name badges and trying to say, well, I'm the head prophet, so who told you you could come here and why are you going up there or... Did nobody lead them to a seat? They let them sit wherever they want to sit. I'm not saying this to put down anything or anybody. Because structure is necessary. Organization is necessary. 
in the confines of a natural church. But I'm saying, let's not smother out Christ with legalism on how we treat other people. And when the doors of the church open, may your heart open with it. The days are over for people who don't know Christ coming into a church building and they felt so disengaged or ostracized just simply because they don't look like everybody in the building. They couldn't get nothing out. They're on the edge of their seat waiting for dismissal so they can never come back again. That sounds hard. They want God. And Christ in us is the hope of glory. Come on, y'all. Let's manifest Christ. Let's get away from this thing that we've been taught, almost taught that this is law. This is the way up. Like the corporate letter, the spiritual letter. This is the way up. You come like this. You join this facility. You become like this and you dress like that and you be this and you talk like that and you formulate your words like this and before you know it, God ain't in it anywhere. You got texts with no, in context, with no spirit and you have people coming and they're hearing about a foreign God who you can acquaint them to because he's still foreign to you. I mean, in our behavior, in our presentation. Thank you, Father. So, to gain influence, that's that argument thing, that's persuasion. And then identity, as believers, identity in Christ speaks of being a new creation where well, the old self that lived apart from Christ is dead. It's crucified with Christ. And the new self emerges living in power of God from Christ likeness to greater Christ likeness. Galatians 2 and 20, which is one of my most favorite scriptures. About I, this life that I now live in the flesh. It is no longer I, but Christ that lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. May you be awakened to Christ's purpose in you. The earth has he given to the sons of men. We can have 50,000 prayer meetings. But at some point, we're going to have to do something with what he has given us. I believe most of us are frazzled by power. Just power, just power, so much power, we don't know what to do with it. Now we're short circuiting because what we are supposed to allow the power to flow through and flow in and flow out of is no exchange. We got to stop looking at ourselves as people that go to church, first and foremost. I've been adopted into the beloved. I am. My identity is connected to Christ. I am an heir. And I know it may sound like you power tripping to say you can do what Jesus did. But you can't. And what I love about it is we sometimes in a construct of the church and it's not an indictment against because we always have to find a place for reference. But I believe that we have looked at how things have been built for reference points. And through the buildings that's established by hands of men, we have tried to construct the foundation of what it looks like to flourish in the kingdom. But 
if Christ made us free, why are we entangled to yokes of bondage? Why did David say, I was glad when they said, come unto me, come into the house of the Lord. But when you get entrenched into the things, you found the, the things that are so unbecoming of what the word says it should be. Sessions where people are saying things that shouldn't be said about others. And Father, we repent. Can we say that? And it's not allowing the nature of Christ to freely flow. If you want glory to be in the service, we have to be yielded. It's just because we think that when we come, the preacher going to do it. And the worship team is going to do it. Or the but I promise you, but I promise you, if you get stirred up overnight, I mean, if God just does something, God did something for me last night, I woke up and knew that if you sit next to me, you was going to be messed up today. I knew it. Something happened to me, and I know it's tangible, and I know that you could feel it if you sit next, if, if you bring Christ with you. In the pews, it's something that happens in worship. I was so stirred when Pastor Karima was leading worship this morning. Something about what she was saying resonated so deeply. And it was because of something that happened in an encounter. And it resonated. It's like, my heart heard it. My, my head heard it and my heart heard what she was saying. And then I resonated with it from my core and it made me tear up. And then Bishop got up and prayed and what he prayed was so in sync with all that God had been doing through me. It stirred me to life in a new way. And I'm thinking, I already don't know how I'm going to preach or what I'm going to say or how I'm going to formulate this because all I, all I'm doing now is standing up talking against uh, these things that are out of alignment with Christ uh, that is protocol in the church uh, and I don't have a protocol for today uh, because God is trying to do away with some of these things uh, that we call him and is locking them out it is not okay it's not okay and dear people, it may hurt your feelings for people to say, I came to your church, I didn't receive nothing. But guess what? It's easy to say because they heathens, they don't want to hear nothing. They don't want to this, that, uh, How about we take a look and see why people don't feel something? Is this us? This is our church? Or as the church of the living God. Do he want to give expression to something that we're missing? How about we humble ourselves and just say, God, show us what we are missing. Because we don't want to miss the masses. We don't want another broken person to come to our services and leave and not have an encounter with you. And we have become content with that language uh, because the world told us to give people the same energy that they give us. Uh, and so if they come and they're not clapping their hands uh, or they are not praising God like me, my energy is to ignore your existence uh, because I don't know who you are. It is not the nature of kingdom. Uh, if you, somebody see your good works, uh, they will glorify your father. I'm telling you you uh, you must become light uh, in darkness uh, you are charged today uh, to rise in your sonship uh, you are without excuse uh, you are not blaming on the last pastor even if he was wrong uh, you are not blaming on the person that you got into it with uh, the people who offended you uh, you can no longer say uh, they looked over me uh, where is God in you Nobody can look over a fruitful human. You are too ripe for me to look over. I see plush fruit and it makes me hungry every time I see you. It 
how we fit in publicly becomes more important than how we fit in privately. It's a problem. We're more concerned with how people feel about us than how Jesus feels. It has become a problem. And I'm not, I'm not down on y'all telling y'all something I don't know. I have wrestled over and over again. Should I wear this? Should I not wear that? Should I say this? Should I not say that? Why? Because the protocols of men, structures of men that they have put in place, it makes me doubt who God really made me. And at times, I shrink a little bit when the Lord says, stand up and prophesy. You ain't they ready, God. They don't want to hear it. Oh, but God is unmuzzling us. And he's going to make us declare a thing. And it's going to be transformational. I dare you to yield. You ain't going to ask for our permission. He's looking for a yes and an amen out of a vessel who will yield to him. Forget about the certificate. Somebody need to hear that. Forget about the microphone. Amplify your own voice. Listen to me. Transformation is taking place. Y'all, for months I've been repenting. Keisha, I remember I was radical enough to just walk up to people in the mall and say, I got to tell you what God is saying. It's a new day. Listen, but I seen myself slowly. I was without understanding about a lot of things. Jack Quest, but I had a zeal. I got saved through such a radical encounter. Can't nobody tell me nothing. You hear me when it comes to Christ. You will not tell me he don't save, he don't deliver, he don't set free from the uttermost to the lowest of the lowest. You ain't going to tell me that he don't dwell in valleys uh, and he don't find broken people at the point uh, of no return and change their life. You're not going to tell me because you missed divine opportunities in life to do what you should have done years ago. That he's not a person that redeems the time. You can't tell me none of that. He changed my life. Every hardship, every trial, he was so present. The hardest thing it is that we will ever face is to be a believer filled with Jesus, but to live without him present in our everyday doings and beings. I got to tell you, the days of 15 confirmations are over. Y'all don't even know I felt like running right there. That devil has blinded us so much and he has put spiritual language on our bondage so hard. We think we're doing the right thing when we are in disobedience, full-blown disobedience. I just want to be in order. Huh? God done told you 50 times to do something. God, I just don't want to be out of order. God, can you find a special way? that I can do that and still look like I'm in order. We don't put spiritual language on disobedience. We done jumped on a bandwagon with the world and started self-care movements like Christ don't care for us, you know, and, and that we are, uh, don't have a high priest that's touched with the feelings of our infirmity. What are we doing? And we jumping on bad bandwagons. 
But the culture of the kingdom tell us, there's a mountain right there. What you crying for? Speak to it. God, it's too heavy. It's too hard. It's too much. It's too this. He said, speak to it. Behold, I give you power. tread on serpents and scorpions and all power of the enemy and by no means shall anything hurt you. God, I will, I will start it, but they won't understand. I want to do it differently. Wrestled with God for some years now because I had so much man's protocol when I was a radical it didn't have, wasn't in the club. <laughs> Not the boogie, woogie, woogie, get down club, but you have arrived. But I wasn't invited to a table. I was at his feet. I understood the assignment a lot better. I got to the table because at the table conversations happened. And just like we're full of faith because faith comes by the word. It comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Do you know what unbelief comes by? Hearing things that are not the word of God. Stay at the table long enough with people. They will say you too radical. You too loud. You a female. You should be just a bit quieter. They say to the male, you know, you, you're a little bit too radical, son. You need, you need to pull that up. I need you to um, uh, wear, wear suits and ties. Because your presentations mean everything. It means nothing. If I'm polished on the outside and broken on the inside... I would rather deal with a tattooed believer who every scar on his face says, I have lived in devilment than a polished person who's broken inside and have all rights and privileges to do whatever they want to do because they are acceptable in the sight of man because of presentation. God judges the heart. We don't. We judge what we see and how we see it. I'm going to bring it to a close, but let me tell you, revival is coming. It is now. The light comes on in revival. People learn who they are. And I also want to give you permission not to wait on somebody for it to start. They said the world has been turned upside down. We talk about it all the time. When we going to turn something upside down? We're going to stop talking about who ain't doing something and just manifest what God is putting us to do. I'm telling y'all, some fire is going to kindle up. Some things I can't speak because in the hearing of indifferent minds, it's going to start rebellion. But I believe God's going to start speaking to his people. And some of you in this room, God is going to use you as a catalyst to start revival. And you're going to find yourself doing things without asking for permission. Like laying hands on the sick so they can recover. Like casting the devil out. Should I call 15 people and let them know? Well, I'm on the worship team, so I'm going to call Private Melody and say, Private Melody, I'm about to cast out the devil. Is it okay? I know she ain't requesting that. That's why I can use her name. I'm just saying that we put so much stipulations in. People are missing God. 
Spirit of the Lord on us, moving on us strong, and we like in a service, in a conference, and something, and the Lord is moving, and we want to go to somebody and, and just really minister, but it's like I'm, on, I'm not on a prophetic team. and I, I mean, some of these protocols, y'all, come on. You might can't do it in the conference, but if he in the hallway, he ain't even paid for the conference. He ain't got no ticket. If he the bell boy and God gave me a word for, for him, I don't have to go find you. Y'all hear me? Who I'm going to look for? If I come up on a wreck and somebody's about to die, do I got to get my pass on speed down before I say you should not live, die, but you should live? I promise you our pastors are like us more if we arise in our identity. It makes life so much more easier. with snacks and all the other stuff we do to try to be close. Y'all don't hear it like a dig. Some people genuinely have the spirit of hospitality and that is not what they're doing. But I'm saying people have motives, different motives for what they do. And we got to get rid of this stuff that when we hear shade thrown against people in church, we go, yes, I do. I, what are you doing? That might not be your thing, but are you producing? In the parables of the talent, the one that did produce, that stuff got taken from him. Give me that. Give me that. Yeah, you ain't going to do nothing with it. Give it here. And every time I read that, I be like, wow, he only had one talent. But whatever God gave us, he expects us to produce with it. We done buried that thing to my, when he come back, I'm still have it. He's like, you still got the same one? You ain't do nothing? That's how you perceived me. That I was a wicked master, a wicked ruler. That you had to preserve something that I gave you. For fear that if you didn't produce, I would hurt you? Huh? That's not who I am. But because I'm a God that has no respect of a person. Listen, God don't have no respect of a person. He loves us the same. But one thing I found out about God, I've been learning his ways over time. He don't have a respect of persons. But he celebrates managers, people with stewardship. He loves good stewards. So what he says, even though I love this guy who was petty and had that talent and do nothing with it, I'm going to give it to a good steward. Give me that. And the ones that are producing, he take his too and do something with it. Then we be at church fighting, thinking, oh, well, they like that person better than this, that, and that. Everybody likes stewards. You too. Stop it. We love stewardship. We love people who are good stewards over what they've been given. And they produce at maximum capacity. Let's produce well in Jesus' name. Stand on your feet. I hope you got something out of this message. Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. I know this, you didn't come on Sunday morning for that. Who gets up and just rack, just, just talk about us? Because it ain't us. It's a false identity. We after that. You stole my identity, these identity thefts and all this stuff happening in the body. We taking our stuff back. My social security number, all that. I need it back. 
been in a room with these conversations that has almost lulled us to sleep, has taken our zeal, and, and, and what we love about who Christ made us. And that, I mean, I remember I live, sleep, drink to, to, to do the works of Christ and to see people change. And I remember becoming this polished professional preacher in one season. And it was all about how much you can give me. But I remember when I gave away uh, what God had gave me for free and I had more fulfillment. Because he paid it all. And he never left me without what I needed. We didn't polish this thing up too much to look like the world. We can't do nothing for Christ unless we own the ballot, something wrong. But I got a certificate of sonship I wanted to share with y'all to put next to my prophet, elder, manager, counselor, prophet, all that kind of stuff. Because we get caught up in that and we think that's the most su success that we can have. When you come in my office, there's all kinds of stuff in there. But then I, today, I was so inspired, I declared, I want to make me a certific certification of sonship. So I'm going to read it to y'all. I'm a certified son, in case you didn't know. It says, this certifies that Aqua L. Robbins is fully persuaded of her identity in Christ Jesus. As an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ, she takes her rightful position in him. She commits to being a demonstrator of the kingdom in word and in deed. I'm going to see this every day. And because I'm so kind, because it's the fruit of the Spirit, if you want a copy, let me know. I will email you a copy so you can put your certification on a wall. Sometimes we need signposts. We need to be reminded of who we are. In Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Come on, let's pray this through. Father, I thank you that as we leave out of this place, that the reality of what has been spoken will not die from our ears, from our heart, from our hearing. But you will amplify the reality of who you have made us in you. And that you will cause us to be sober in a way that we have not known sobriety. And that we will rise up from the dictates uh, or the presence of men where bondage has been placed upon us. Uh, we ask for forgiveness where we have participated in works and acts and deeds uh, and even performance instead of demonstration. And we ask that you begin to move on our behalf. Uh, Lord, that you will begin to move in us. Uh, and that the Christ in us, which is the hope of glory, will be stirred again. Uh, that we will not be afraid to let our light shine, uh, that men will even see our good works and glorify our Father. Father, we will not be afraid to start a riot wherever we go. And when you speak to us about people, we'll not be making excuses why I didn't show them the kingdom, uh, why I didn't demonstrate your power. Let every link to fear that's connected to control die by fire in the name of Jesus. Uh, we declare, Lord God, that you baptize us uh, with the Holy Holy Ghost in that with fire. Now let that fire begin to purify us uh, from the inside out. Uh, we want to relish in your presence again. Uh, I declare a new hunger for your presence comes upon uh, a people, Lord God, who will surrender to the realities. Uh, for Christ I live, for him I die. And I declare, Lord God, uh, that today uh, we reckon with the reality uh, that you have made us an that we are no longer alienated, that we don't need a title, we don't need permission to demonstrate the works that you have placed in us and the glory that we hope to see, that we'll be an explosion of glory one to another. And when we touch and agree, that there will be an explosion of power released one house at a time, one person at a time, that we will release the kingdom wherever we go, that we release the need uh, for man's permission uh, to do what we were called to do. Uh, let the anointing of the living God uh, that destroys every yoke of bondage uh, rest upon you strong. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we declare it. Uh, oh God, we
we give you praise. Say, I receive it. Just take a word, a moment. Don't say it to me. Say it to God. I receive it. You know you've been out of alignment. Say, Lord, I let that go, but I receive it. You've been having a problem with church as you know it. Say, Lord, I receive you. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to do what you call me to do, how you call me to do it. I receive it. I let the works fall off of me. The words that said I was condemned, that I wouldn't be able to walk in what you call me to. Grief connected to purpose. When I got cut off, at the moment I was gaining momentum, somebody said you're not good enough. I break those things off your people. And today I declare that every lying spirit dies in the midst of us. And that this day we are resurrected to life and reality. That we are sons of God in particular. And we can walk away from this place saying, I know who I am. I am a child of God. That I am a born in the kingdom. That I'm not religious or Pharisee or Sadducee. That church doesn't mean formulas and protocols and legalism. But it's demonstration and power. And I yield to it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we get a hallelujah? Come on, raise your hallelujah in this place. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Now we will receive Prophet and Melody as she comes. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, let the sun shout hallelujah. Come on, let the sun shout hallelujah. Because I know who I am. I'm a son of God. I rise in power and demonstration so the world can see Jesus in me. So the world can see Jesus in me. Do you have your communion? Are you ready to give? We're going out singing and dancing and manifesting. The whole world is groaning, travailing. They're waiting on you. They're waiting on me. The sons of God. 